And would it be a stream? Would it be a first five streams? Maybe more than five at this point. Would it be a first ten streams without little audio glitches like that? No. I just don't think it would be. Our next goal in the Toy Story world is extremely important and I've forgotten what it is. So, I'm going to run up here and hope that it is getting in through this window. Which I know we do at some point. No! Ah! Then I do know what it is, and it's that we have to go back to the entrance. Oh, and I love seeing all these different colors in chat right now. Hello, everybody. Tony, you're such a beautiful green. Austin's orange beside the purple. Battery is a little bit rougher as a combo, but it's not too bad. And Tim. Orange and blue, which are evil colors, but I'm happy to see them. Oh, whoa! I didn't even know I could grind on this. Making the balloons go. Hmm. Sarge, roll call. Sir, yes, sir. Roll call. All toys fall in. Sarge, army men times four. Four army men. Damn. Aliens. One, Not a lot. Two, three. Wait, where's Rex? Eh, he took off. Said he wanted to prove to you you could trust Sora. He's up there by the video games. Oh no. <sighs> well, here we go again. Huh? This is about us? <laughs> He's not safe. The Heartless are out there. You're right. Sora, Donald, Goofy. Any chance you could help us one last time? Something that feels common sure. with the storylines in these guys. worlds is that you end up doing the same thing more than once, or that you end up repeating a struggle or, or a challenge you've already done. The, obviously, the biggest example of this is the Frozen world, where the whole thing is going up and down the mountain over and over. But I think a couple of them have a vibe like this, where they are... You think you're ready to go and then you have to basically do the same thing again or go back up to the same a similar area again. And I really wonder if the main thing there is because oh I guess no, I was gonna say maybe that video games are like reusing areas, but or they need to just extend the length of a mission. But that's not true here because each of the places I'm talking about uses a completely different area for the continued battle. It's just a common theme of never being finished when you think you are. And it never being as simple as it seems at first. Hooray! Look! Oh. <laughs> look! Look! I found it! Uh, see, Sora? Well, I never looked this good. The clothes kind of matched. <laughs> Sora, believe in yourself. What do you know? They are video game figures. It is really interesting how much I told you, Buzz. the main character They're of your Rex Yazora like seems very like Riku esque. <laughs> well, and yes, I Austin, suppose. the Yazora part of it. Yeah. The blue eye and the red eye being the two of them. Explain. The fact that he's wearing kind of Riku's clothes. Say, Riku would make a great if you haven't figure. seen, in the new theory that's been posted online, I should double check. No who the creator of that theory is, so I can shout the them out. And, uh, the... All right, everyone. <laughs> Donald is so together. mean. The... It's time to return to Andy's room. Now? But can't I at least check what the is the name of this creator? Guides? I want to know how to beat Bahamut. The theory was written by a couple different Next people. Time. It's called oh, the Sleeping Realm Theory. Uh, but you can find it most... Easily at Nikutsune, N I K U T S U N E. I believe it's their pinned tweet, and it is an incredible 350 page rundown and analysis of Kingdom Hearts 3. And it actually brought to light that I was confused about something that's happening here. I thought this was Ansem, but this is young Xehanort before he has split. You would say that, champion of light. Very well. Let's skip to the final stage. Buzz? What's 
the matter? And now Buzz's greatest insecurity has come true. Come on, Buzz. Quit fooling around. Look out! Is this really Wallace Shawn? That's amazing. Buzz has been taken over? What did you do to him? I thought I made it clear. I am testing the strength of their bonds. It also pointed out how cool this moment is. This like, world, how is Young Master Xehanort able to just, like, disappear every time and Sora tries to hit him? Come from a powerful bond. So what happens when those bonds their theory is that it's because limit. he's kind of groundhog dang through this again. Heart, can cloth and plastic hold on to their hearts? All I needed was a wedge to widen the divide. Someone like you to fill them with distrust and doubt, and that chasm you created can be filled with a vast darkness. Witness it for yourself. Do something! On my way! Not this time. And that right there is not this time. It is an interesting choice of words. I am I guess we did face him some in Dream Drop Distance, so he could be referring to that. But the creator of the theory, the Sleeping Realm theory, says that he is he has gone through this before because this I? is actually the second time Sora is going through Haven't this as well. Heard? In this world you come from a video game. Because so at this point we are inside the sleeping realm. Inside that and now inside that of a is, simulation, inside of the Toy Story to world, inside of the sleeping rest. realm. There's got to be a way out. Buzz, Woody, hang on. One of the most interesting things that the theory talks about is that despite Dream Drop Distance being the game right before this, it's actually referenced very little compared to the other games like the the sleeping worlds as an idea the the closest thing we get to it right is the use of meow wow the dream eater as a summon so that's gonna zap him but the but the interesting thing that they point out about that is that meow wow takes on their original form they actually look like the cat from the game but that uh yeah. The other summons you do, like Ariel and Simba, all appear to be sort of like essentialized versions of themselves or like elemental versions of themselves. And so it seems interesting that although they cannot take on their true forms to visit you and help out like they could in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, for example, the Meow Wow can, which might imply that we're in the Sleeping Realm because Sora had to go to the Sleeping Realm specifically to say goodbye to his friends. He was not able to just summon them to the real world until he got this heartbinder. There we go. Next. Let's see. I played this game a little bit after I finished the game too. I went back and tried out, tried to get some of the achievements you can get from it, but I missed that good Kingdom Hearts combat, so I didn't finish. I've played a couple times though. These little ones are very cute. I kind of wish there were more of these. I want to ride around in the tiny one. Ooh. And the way that this works basically is you're stuck in your mech. I can use traps to beat them as well, and I can switch which mech I'm in as long as I defeat one of the prime ones. The rest of them will just explode, but the prime ones let you take on their, their mech shape. Ooh, where'd the little one go? There he is. No! Tricky. Him Got him though. Mm -hmm. Mm 
that reticle is interesting, especially when we were playing the uh, that other mech game, the Daemon X Machina on stream. It's such a marked difference that the uh, reticle appears, but it doesn't take your bullets there. You can feel that you have to aim your bullets and feel them as they pulse out. Versus in Daemon X Machina, which is like a full-fledged mech game, where as long as your reticle appeared, you were just mowing through them and you could barely even tell you were firing. Had that big bazooka in that final boss, and I used it twice before I was like, oh, I shot it. <laughs> I already shot the bazooka. Oh, I wish I'd gotten up there early enough to blow that up. Oh, I got a couple of them at least. I better switch mechs. Let's do the punchy one. I wonder if you can go down. Oh no, it goes straight across. Okay. It's like a doom fist attack. Now we gotta beat the gold one. This is the only, other than the Winnie the Pooh world, I guess, this is the only minigame that they really make you do. There's a lot of minigames. There's the flans that are, the flans, that are scattered around, um, that you can do optionally for extra stuff, but this is the only minigame you have to beat over the course of the real game. Even the Winnie Pooh stuff, I think you can kind of ignore. All right, got to get back to a mech or I'm never going to beat this guy. Will this be our first death? I hope not. Let's go. Cannon time. Oh, that was good. Knocked him totally over. And now we can summon Wreck-It Ralph. I guess he stumbled in during one of his video game travels on the internet. Found this one. I guess, I wonder if Wreck-It Ralph and Toy Story are in the same universe, if that's part of the vibe, that arcade cabinets count as toys, and so that's why they can come alive. Or rather than the cabinets, the characters within them. We know a toy doesn't have to have an explicit character to be alive, but we've got the army men, though I guess they have an implied personality. Yeah. I'm just fine. And you? Oh, wait. But at what point during the video game development process does a character become real enough that it will come to life? Oh. Sora, how do we get him back? I don't know. My power won't open those. <sighs> Sir, did I hear you say dark corridor? <laughs> That's right, Sarge. Any ideas? Well, it might be a long shot, but we've sighted a shadowy portal in the Kid Corral. We can infiltrate from a window. That doesn't sound like a long shot at all. I'll head there and get it open. Sarge, you're a lifesaver. You guys in? These four <laughs> army men are able to keep track of this whole place Please really well. Promise you'll bring Buzz home. With batteries included? Journey safely. Farewell. Don't hmm. worry. We're going to get our friend back. 
Yes, we are. Oh, and you know what I did not fix last time? Also, the name Beat of Lead is such a strange name. Beat is in rhythm? Or is it Beat of Lead as in leadership? There's a lot of potential ways to <laughs> interpret this title. I did not check on our abilities. And I do need to do that because we got high jump. Oh, and we got aerial recovery, which is very important. What else do we have? A combo finisher, great. A combo finisher near Goofy, even better. Pull swing back on because we've got some extra points. Hmm. I guess I'll put them both on for now. We're not as worried about magic, but I probably should be using it a little bit more. And Donald, how are you doing? You can have a fire boost. Goofy can have his powers back and the team attack extender. And we don't have to worry about Woody. I did see that article. Tony just mentioned that Kotaku has an article featuring all of the games in the game shop and doing little fake reviews for them. And they're all really cute and well done. I definitely recommend checking it out. Yes, the Space Cats game. So the Space Cats cover, let me see if I can find it. I think it's over here. The Space Cats cover reminded me a lot, yes, of Star Fox, obviously, because that's kind of the vibe that it's going for. But it made me think about Blinks the Time Cat, who was an Xbox game, one, I think on the original Xbox. And I've talked about him a lot lately, but you had kind of like a time vacuum that you could use to go forward and back. And you were fighting monsters and doing some like jumping puzzles. I don't know if anybody else played that game, but it was like a, an Xbox exclusive back when I had the original Xbox. I don't think I ever beat a single game on the original Xbox. I'm gonna skip by these people, head to the boss. Gotta find a dark portal. This is what they said, right? Go through the window in Babies and Toddlers. And then find the dark portal in the vents, I guess? Yeah. Oh no, okay, I remember now. It's not this one. It is the Babies and Toddlers outdoor area. It's that window that I tried to go in earlier. <laughs> in the play place. Excuse me, everyone. These poor Heartless. They want to fight so bad. Those little round guys who have the strong tummies in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, and in basically every single Kingdom Hearts game, have been the bane of my existence. But for some reason in 3, they weren't as much of a problem. I guess it's because you have so many different ways of attacking that you can just kind of ignore them until you have a big final combo that's going to beat them. Yeah, maybe they're both babies and toddlers, but it's like different kinds of equipment, like this is, but I'm not sure. Oop. I do love this though, this big blocky play place. I would love to see actual kids playing in this and what it's like. Do they have a real daycare or do you just bring your kid here and let them hang out? Gonna get some mana from this stuff bear. <laughs> it's so cute. A little too many patterns maybe, but I like it. Oh, it's got little like block houses and stuff on its stomach. Cute. The entrance was blocked by blocks? Hysterical. Use the to move One of the best them? jokes in video game history yeah, right maybe. there. I'll try. I love that Woody's like, can you use the gigas to move them? Like, oh, they're really big. Maybe the mech can lift them. And Sora's like, actually, I think it's going to be this magic. <laughs> I think I'm going to do this electric magic on the toy blocks that these toy mechs have just like ready to go. I'm going to shoot my telekinetic laser. Something that it took me a long time to figure out because when something goes up with lines like this, I think, oh, that must not be movable. That must be 
just like a a part of the scenery. But if you punch it, the blocks all fly away. How are we gonna reach that? Well, there are some more blocks here. <laughs> but they won't be easy. Blue one down. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Came out. Ooh. So let's switch. Got him. Still more. So much mech battle. This level took me a long time because the last set of blocks I like could not find and I had to go and to turn it off, go do something else, come back another day. But this time I remember where they all are I think so it should be a little faster. We'll need more than that. These blocks, I think the touch of the little road lines on them is so cute because it reminds me of those real blocks that I've played with before, that I played with when I was a kid, of those those like squishy blocks that had roads on them. One of my favorites. It's an item right here. Now we have to get out of the back. Get out of there. Yeah, Tim, this one room in particular was like just sort of weirdly complicated in a way that I didn't know how to get around it or didn't know what exactly to look for and this part is actually not all that big like this area but because it's got these different vertical spaces and all of the walls look kind of similar I spent a lot of the time feeling like I was lost or I was missing something when really it's just not all that big let's get in this mech <laughs> Treasure chest. Let me in. Something I found myself wishing with this game, like and I don't want to complain about it because this game gave me a lot and it gave me a lot of what I wanted. But something I found myself wishing was that I could have, instead of these levels all being really long, I could have like each of them be about half the length and have twice as many worlds. <laughs> that's what I wanted. But I know that's tougher because you can't reuse as much when you're building a level. You can't, um, you have to find more Disney properties and probably pay for them. The content would have to be more complicated. Sora's story in those worlds would have to be shorter. Uh, and oh my gosh, that theory that I was talking about, the one that you should go check out, its case for which Disney worlds were picked and why was like so good and made me feel so much better about the princess worlds. They have like a really great breakdown of the themes in the worlds and why and how they line up with Sora and Riku's story, and it was just really, really well done. Talking about how um, Arendelle and uh, the Tangled World 
Maybe the Tangled World is Arendelle? No, Arendelle is frozen. Anyway, the two of those, the princess worlds, how they both revolve around specifically a like self-sacrificing moment that leads to one of the characters being revived. Corona, yes, thank you. Um, leads to one of the characters being revived and the final moments of the like major arc of this, not to give any spoilers, kind of involve a little bit of that too. There's that ringing noise. Here come the groceries. Do not be alarmed. That alarm is not your alarm. You're not going to wake up and realize you've been asleep this whole time. You have nowhere to be. You're just here with me playing Kingdom Hearts 3. And all the banging noises are, uh, just consider them calming. Got that on. <laughs> that was actually not the groceries, I guess. Mm -hmm. And now we gotta fly up here. This is such a pretty little zone, though. I like the wall. I wish I could have seen Sora, like, actually climb on the, the climbing wall. Oh, I actually have to have the mech to do the spell. <laughs> Nort this. I really... I know we talked about it in an earlier episode, but I still miss the fact that in that Twilight Town level that we left a little while ago, they made such a point about Sora potentially embracing the darkness, and then we don't see that really carried out explicitly in the story. With the exception potentially of his rage form maybe being a representation of that. I love this room. When I came here, I played around in here forever because it is just the coolest. So this is fun. You can just like do this and hurt people. But also the balls themselves all individually bounce around. You get to jump through here. You get to do a whole fight in the middle of a ball pit and it's incredible. It's so nice. I just like, I wonder how much time this one particular room took. And at what point in development, oh my gosh, and I forgot they let you do the mad teacups in here. It's even better. They give you this one specifically because it's gonna be the most fun one to knock around the balls. This moment just feels like a culmination of like, all of the possibility in Kingdom Hearts. Like. Sometimes Kingdom Hearts can feel like a thing that, when you imagine it, sounds incredible and fun and goofy and silly and like, oh, they could do so many weird combos and so much strange stuff. And sometimes they don't quite do that. Sometimes you end up in a, like, kind of lonely feeling version of Cinderella or a kind of lonely feeling version of uh, The Hunchback of Notre Dame or whatever. But in this moment, it feels like such a perfect combination of what you can do. You can take Toy Story World, which is this, like, kind of interesting and weird uh, situation where everybody's a toy and you can put somebody who is busy doing an action hero adventure Final Fantasy mission in the middle of it for a little while to give you a break, give you something fun to do. It just feels like the culmination of a bunch of potential. The balls disappear when you kick them out though. And there's the other blocks. Those are the ones that took me forever to find. You kind of have to go around this way. The other nice thing about that battle is that it wasn't story necessary. You could have moved those blocks and then ignored it, but they set up such a great way for you to step into a battle you're not going to want to skip. Because it seems so important and cool. So these blocks you cannot break as Sora. You have to have a mech, and any of the mech's attacks will do it. So I can go in here, and now I can punch them out. And that's why it took me so long to find. I saw those walls and didn't realize you could just like step straight through them. They fade out really fast though, I think, to make sure there aren't a lot of these like 
bouncy assets all over the place. Yeah, I know that they mean he can run up the wall. Oh, sorry, you're telling Tony. Okay, yeah. He can run up the wall and the... Uh, and so usually it means, oh, that wall is stable. It just sits there. But they just gave that effect to those to make them a little more surprising when you knock them out. Who's left? Ah. Anything special over here? No, just another way in. Now, there's not a lot of Final Fantasy stuff in this game. All of the characters from the previous games just, like, don't show up, which is very sad. We only spend a very short period of time in Radiant Garden, and it is just to see it in a cutscene or two. But we do have this little cameo. And I love him. A <laughs> cactus? Yep, and it's our way up to the dark corridor. <laughs> I knew you'd like that, Tony. I didn't realize how much of this you hadn't seen or played. Yeah. The first time I ran up that, it took me a while because uh, the wall running, you can run at an angle, but if you need to go directly to the side, he has to totally switch and only be going to the side. And the angle that he can go to the side and go up is not very steep. So you have to be kind of specific and careful. Whoa, that's so cool, Tony. You're definitely seeing the prettiest one first, like but they're all worth playing. Yep. Here goes. And now, for one of the best scenes of the game. The first time I was playing this with Michael, who also has not seen very many Kingdom Hearts games, I think this was the scene that he had the most fun with at first. Because we've got Woody directly confronting the darkness. <laughs> What do you want with my friend? <laughs> Look, such tremendous darkness. All because he was ripped away from the boy who cares about him most. Does that and that's not exactly the truth. Buzz didn't we'll turn dark be like because Buzz? he was ripped away from Andy. If we don't he was find possessed Andy? and he was paranoid. Distance doesn't matter. But he was paranoid about Andy's being possessed. Part of their hearts, just like my friends are part of mine. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of that what apart. Sora is clearing up here. Woody always forgets the name of the <laughs> Woody can never remember Andy's name. He's like, I have this really powerful your friends are your emotion friends. and feeling and memory, but I have to look directly at it or I can't okay, remember who it is. True. But if the light of friendship is a form of power... The darkness of being alone is a power even greater. I don't know how that follows. That was a bad sentence. <laughs> if friendship is powerful, Whatever then being alone about, is even better. I don't care. <laughs> back the way he was, then That's my favorite watch. line. What, toy? He yeah. does his big little monologue and what he's just like, and whatever you're saying. I just don't care. My guess is no one's ever loved you before. Boom. Because you know nothing about hearts and love. What he said. There are hearts all around <laughs> us, trying to connect. Your loneliness only made Woody and Buzz's connection stronger. That's the heart's true nature. To never, ever let go. 
wherever they are, Andy and the other <laughs> Hi, Peter. Go either. And yeah, for real, yeah. this is great. You can't keep us from Andy. We're going home no matter what. But my favorite thing about the and Pixar movies five. and the way they do the characters is they Stay really short. do feel true to the characters. You're so caught up in finding the shadows. You forgot about the light that cast them. Like Woody has always been a little bit no nonsense. No. <laughs> Woody, now. That's an interesting point, Austin, saying that the dualities in that that sentence is maybe legitimized by the duality of friendship and solitude and darkness and light. And you're right that darkness and light are often represented as something that has to grow. When one grows, the other must, which is shared in Star Wars as well. Woody. So you're right. It does in the Wait, context of this game. It does follow. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. Maybe somebody switched you into dark and stormy mode. But I don't have a. <laughs> oh, that was another one of those jokes. Thank you, Woody. Good to have you back, Buzz. Hey, huh? We can't hold him much longer. Don't give up, guys. <laughs> so even empty puppets can be given strong hearts. I am going to have to remember that. Their whole plan relies on that idea. <laughs> will always be connected to Andy's. But we have learned some nice stuff about no puppets and it's cool to do. tie the Toy Story toys you'll never to understand. like the bodies because of nobodies which they do with that language. But now I know a heart can be placed in the vessel of our choosing. Hmm, so that's what he just learned. Let me give you a parting gift to play with. I wonder what they would have done otherwise. Find the hearts joined to yours. Huh? <laughs> Oh, whoa, I don't think I noticed that young Xehanort said that. Find the hearts joined to yours. Yeah, he definitely, he's talking about replicas here, but uh, I guess they must have considered the Riku replica to have never had a real heart, which makes sense. That's something that they would believe. I love this level too. Everything in it is breakable. The only sad part about it is the UFO like pretty much right away destroys all of it in a way that... Uh, Makes it so you you end up fighting on a mostly flat stage pretty quick. Let's go, tree trunks. That was young Xehanort. Um, but young Xehanort is... Like, young Master Xehanort is Terra. So not... It's, so that's the distinction between young Master Xehanort and young Xehanort, I think. Young Xehanort we only see in the cutscenes. Young Master Xehanort is the one that was Terra. Oh! what? Uh, so the one who told him to find the hearts was Terra. Uh, what makes you think that, Austin? Do you think it's because Terra is inside the young Master Xehanort? I guess at this stage, I was thinking that Terra wouldn't be directly connected to Xehanort because his actual heart is in that suit of armor. So I wouldn't, I didn't think he would be able to talk through his body either way. And we do know that like the bad guys do want us to find the hearts connected with theirs because the end game is that they want everybody there in the fight. It's too big. Gotta find another pig. Oop. No, please. Ah. So I could do rage form now, but I'm actually gonna cure. Let's get our shield back. 
At this point in the game, the first time I played, I still hadn't figured out that I could hit L2 to switch which thing I activated, so I always thought I had to activate everything in order, which was aggravating and felt like bad design, but it turns out it was just me not trying things enough. Whew, how do I get back up there? Oh yeah, so this kind of lets you step directly, or you can do the shot luck teleporting thing. Let's see if I can stay up here while I'm riding the chariot. Doesn't necessarily seem like it's doing a ton of damage to him, but yeah. And Donald. That was incredible. That's why that's my favorite. Big Vortex. Oh no. What is going on? Where am I? Oh my gosh. Let's heal. Is there anything we can do? Well, I can shield from it. Oh, whoa, it regenerates the whole city. I don't know if I made it that far last time. That's very cool. I wonder if they took a segment of Big Hero 6 and just replaced it all with toy stuff. <laughs> Since they had already built a city, maybe. Whoa. I'm going to stay up there. I'm gonna get him! <laughs> Maybe not. There we go. Let's go, kitty. No! hits on something. Alright. Come on, blocks. No. No. You can do it, Sora. Climb the Legos. There we go. Got him. Nice big UFO. So Saiyan Lord got away again. Yeah, he's a big chicken. I'm sorry. What? Hmm? I wanted to get you back to the real world. <laughs> it I... does seem that we're trapped here. Coming up right after Hercules World 2, the story in that one wraps up, but Sora's point in the world, like his goal, didn't actually happen. Like he didn't figure out how to do the power of waking. He didn't really figure out why he was there. And in this one, he does not we'll help them get back to their real place. 
with our new best friends. Mainly because you need to be able to keep hanging out with Buzz and Woody when you come back here, I guess. <laughs> We're not quite ready to say so long. <laughs> you guys. I'm sorry that I was being so stubborn. Please forgive me. Hey, you were just looking out for your friends. No biggie. Yeah, somebody's got to be the sensible one. Huh? Especially since Woody's always getting in trouble. Gorge, that sounds a little like Sora, don't it? Huh? Yeah, I like Buzz. Kinda. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, if we do go back to the real world, we'll never see you again, right? Oh. That's also really interesting to me. Andy? Like, what? You care about him so much. Why is that? All these other worlds really exist. Oh. Why, when they go back to their other world, where their and world not exists somewhere? Right here with and this is something that the actual theory well, does make a lot of sense for. Hearts. If this is a sleeping yeah, version of the world, again. which we've seen in Dream Drop Distance, it could be that he yeah. is in the realm of sleep, and if they switch back so to the other sorry. one, if they leave, the the he will coat? have to stay in the sleeping version Something of the of the world, or the world itself will have to wake up, that. and then it won't be accessible. That's okay, because you become part of our hearts. Which makes me wonder about Dream Drop Distance, because we do kind of wake up those worlds, but then you can go back and revisit them, so they didn't do the same sort of narrative wiggle that they do so here to make going back and revisiting people. stay in canon. <laughs> It is so cute, now, though. Off you go. To infinity and beyond. <laughs> Buzz absolutely said that, like somebody who was forced to say their catchphrase. You found them at a coffee shop and you needed them to say it. He just said it as quickly as possible. The right inflection, but not the right pace. Thank you, Toy Box. You were so pretty. It really does. And now we get another good strength keyblade, which is great because this keyblade is so nice. And very silly looking, the cactus and the rocket ship. You had to remind me? <laughs> of course. We just want to help keep you motivated. Yeah, chill out, Sara. I was thinking about Roxas. He's trapped here in my heart. But he needs a body to be himself again. Well, don't worry. Yenzo's working on a way to get him free. Oh, bet you he's got the perfect body all lined up. <laughs> he's got the perfect body all lined up. Why don't you what try a sentence. giving him a call? Uh, I guess so. Yeah, why not? I love the ringtone. I kind of want it. Hiya, Sora. <laughs> Wrong number? No. Rico and I are visiting. The facial animation work on that was really good. Actually, Sora looked really great. Just about to call you guys. But it looks like you beat us to the punch. Sora, is something wrong? I wanted to pick your brain. I hope so badly that some of the DLC Roxas, we get is gonna be playing as body, Riku or playing right? as Kyrie and Axel and doing the stuff that's happening on the sidelines of this yeah, game. To put his heart in. Even if it doesn't add anything to the story, it would just be so fun. I love Sora, but it is really time mm. to play some other characters in this universe. Huh? Replicas? Huh? Well, replicas are basically human. Oh, uh, what? Oh, <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't remember. 
The previous Organization 13 developed replicas, realistic vessels to place hearts in. They're so real, in fact, that you'd actually mistake them for people. And with hearts, the replicas will become people. Do not cool. say Winnie the Pooh DLC Winnie out loud at me like it's true. I will not allow it. Like himself when he's recompleted? I will not spend yeah. one more second past what I have to in the Winnie the, the Pooh world. It. That's perfect. I'll talk to Ienzo. He was in the organization back then, so he might know more. It's interesting, too, that the heart remembers the body form. That, like, by putting a heart in a replica, the replica can see, can, like, scan it and see what the body looked like. Who's that? The organization and Maleficent. Huh. It's okay. <laughs> but there's something you the first thing Mickey does is assure them that it's fine that they didn't say a very important piece of information about a villain. So let the rest of us worry about Roxas and Naminé for now. You journey on and keep an eye out for Terra. Wait, what did he say during that? <laughs> Is there something important they have to know about one of the members and then just skipped it? What did they say during that? Nope, that's their best quality. Well. We gave Merlin the vestments for Kyrie and Axel. I guess they told him about Terra? And some the wisest study. But maybe they already knew right. about Terra? I didn't notice that at all the first time. There's that weird gap in the middle of that conversation. Austin, Peter, do you guys have a theory about that? There was no Eeyore, but there was Lumpy, so they just had to cut down on the number of characters. It's very simple. Okay, we're headed toward the Kingdom of Corona. Okay. Special weapon is going to be twin shot. Our main ship. Um. I don't want to embark from Twilight Town though. Let's go from this waypoint. So the team decided not to mention Maleficent, and then in that conversation that happened just now, they accidentally did, and they said, oh, oops, we should have mentioned that. And then right after that, Mickey said, there's something that you have to know about one of Organization 13's members. And then it cut to, so you guys worry about that, and we'll go looking for Terra. I wonder if they just told him that they realized Terra was inside of Young Masters Aenord, like if that's what the problem was. And so they were just refreshing him, even though I guess we might have already known that from a previous cutscene? I don't remember. I'm not going to do much gummy ship flying today because I don't think it's especially exciting on stream. And I might sneak on while I'm not streaming and do some of this kind of grinding so we can keep moving through the story. But I do want to find a Damascus, at least one. So we can upgrade, oops, our keyblades. Or if you guys won, I guess I could do I could do the grind on stream and just have it be outside of the normal uh, row and be very clear about it. <laughs> You're gonna come see me do some grinding and playing around today. Maybe that would be nice.
Come on, Damascus. I hit a point where I had so many, but I was never specifically working toward them when I was playing on my own. It's a lot more frustrating to be blowing these up when you have a specific mission. I never figured out the direct difference between these pink ones and the blue crystals. Like what specifically happens between those two. There it is, the kingdom. Do we have a boss to fight before we land here? I should have worked on my ship a little, <laughs> but we'll see. Maybe this one will be easier than the Toy Story one would have been. Oh no, we got it, great. Oh, okay. And do blue ones just have rare items? Do you know, Peter? Oh! Okay, so the pink ones have gummy shrimp blueprint fragments. But do they come back as blue? Or do they come back as pink later on? Okay, so they regenerate as blue, and the blue ones will keep regenerating, so you always have Why a place to get rare items. Outside? That's cool. The outside world is a dangerous place. You must stay here where you're safe. Do you understand, Flower? Something I like that Kingdom Hearts does is whenever they have interference with villains in Disney stories, they never act like their interference is what made the villains bad. They give them more power sometimes, or they give them Heartless to do darkness, but they never undercut the fact that the villain themselves is already evil. So like in this case, I was really nervous. I, I had never thought about it before, but for some reason, once we started this one, I was really nervous that they were going to somehow make it that Mother Gothel was like partially evil because they like give her some darkness or like push mother gothel to be evil and they do have marluxia like pep talk her into being bad a little bit but by the end of it it's pretty apparent that mother gothel like is the darkness in this world because she is she's a horrible mom a pretty day <clears throat> yeah the weather is great it'd be perfect for a picnic why do you think we come here got me donald <laughs> we'll figure it out as we go <laughs> okay. i'm sure we were brought i feel it donald for some good reason but can't we sweat it later it is cute how they preserved the vibe of him having to run away and falling and starting out the whole movie as a chase, but just put Heartless there instead of the horse now. 
Oh, they're little bouncy hats. Those heartless are so cute. You see? As soon as you mention them, they show up. There goes our picnic. I won't do it. It's okay. Let's send these guys packing. <laughs> I didn't catch before that he was kind of blaming Donald. What you're doing, mind if I leave this one to you? Yep. We'll take care of them. Go on, skedaddle. You have my thanks. Whew. The horse was enough. Don't need any monsters on my trail. What? What's your name? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Name's Flynn, Flynn Rider. Oh, watch out. They look mad. <laughs> All right, let's defeat these little sprouts. Oh yeah, I forgot, we kind of skipped and went to the harder one first because I wanted to play Toy Box, I think. So we will be having an even easier time here, which I don't mind. It'll move us through, a, move us through it pretty quick. Beautiful. <laughs> I think somebody really in the localization team wanted to make Donald say all the silliest words they could possibly. How will Donald say skedaddled? How will Donald say this looks like a good place to find some ingredients? I say we investigate. Flynn, where are you? Flynn? One out of two maps of the forest. Boom, boom, boom. Where could he possibly be? Whew, we looked so hard for so long. <laughs> At least he got away safe. He looks right? right between it. Let me make sure this is really good to lean on. Big hole? Hey, Seems right. Now Sora's gone too. This way, guys. It's a secret passage. I wonder if the script the script was written. And the person didn't remember exactly what it looked like there in the movie. Oh. And it was actually a very wide hole. They were all so close. How you doing? The name's Flynn Rider. How's your day going? Huh? Here's one of the movie scenes. Let's all just enjoy the movie Tangled for a little while. Who else knows my location? 
Flynn Rider. All right, hang on, Blondie. Rapunzel. Gesundheit. Here's the deal. I was in a situation gallivanting through the forest when I stumbled upon it. Oh. Oh, no, no. No, 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 no. Where is my satchel? I've hidden it. Somewhere you'll never find it. So, what do you want with my hair? To cut it? Huh? Sell it? No! Wait, you don't want my hair? Why on earth would I want your hair? Look, I was being chased, I saw a tower, I climbed it, okay? End of story. Hmm? I love the little chameleon. <laughs> Shout out to Sabo. Okay, Lynn Ryder. I'm prepared to offer you a deal. A deal? Look this way. <laughs> do you know what these are? You mean the lantern thing they do for the princess? Lanterns? I knew they weren't stars. Well, tomorrow evening, they will light the night sky with these lanterns. You will act as my guide, take me to these lanterns, and return me home safely. Then, and only then, will I return your satchel to you. I can't that believe Mother fault. Gothel told her her real birthday. Yeah, okay. I'm sure a million people have said that about Dangled. Unfortunately, but why did she know the real day she was born? I aren't exactly simpatico at the moment, so I won't be taking you anywhere. <laughs> the little squeaky sound his paws made was cute. Something brought you here, Flynn Rider. Call it what you will, fate, destiny. So I have made the decision. To trust you. A horrible decision, really. I am serious. Mm. Oh. <clears throat> Let me get this straight. I take you to see the lanterns, bring you back home. Then you give me back my satchel? I promise. Oh, this and scene is I so long. Something, I never, ever break that promise. We're getting our way through it together, everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry I don't have any fancy commentary for this. There's nothing oh, Kingdom Hearts here. It is just the movie Tangled. Does anyone have any questions about the movie Tangled? I need the satchel and Blondie has it. There might be more monsters out there. I've got it. The three guys in the funny outfits. They look tough enough to come in handy. All right, fine. I'll take it. But on ah. one condition. My three sidekicks come along. Oh, awesome. In case you're not looking at chat or you're watching this later, Austin rewatched the scene before with Mickey Riku and Sora call before Mickey and Riku calls before they call Sora and they found out that Terra's body was used by Xehanort, which uh, is what they must have told Sora during that time. Let's check it out. And they also figured out that the organization was looking for vessels, which is interesting because it seems like they weren't until they figured that out at the toy box with Sora. Great job, everybody. We gained two levels today. We're up to six and a half hours of playtime. That's amazing. If you haven't already, uh, subscribe to my Twitch channel, please do. And if you haven't checked out checked out my YouTube channel, any of the streams you've missed in the past, if you want to see commentary on previous parts of Kingdom Hearts to catch up, or if you want to see the first episode of our Sexy Brutal series, which is a great adventure, adventure mystery game that I'm going to be playing in the evenings every once in a while, our first episode of that is up, and I'll be watching that. I'll be playing that again soon. Um, <laughs> Peter has asked what my hair's magic power is, and I think. My hair's magic power is the ability to clump together and stick up with very little product at any time. I have very powerful, very thick, magical hair. It would be very difficult to cut. Uh, you'd have to get one of those uh, Hercules, some of those Hercules scissors that the fates have. Uh, but thank you so much for coming today and watching this stream. It was fun to do it on a Saturday. Thank you for taking an hour out of your weekend to hang out with me. And I will be back soon with more Kingdom Hearts. See y'all later. Let's see.
see. Bye. Not yet.